Well, Sarge, let's welcome everybody to Conversational Shaving. Well, hello there. How are you? Um, I've been tagged by Robert's Classic Shaving to do a death row video. In other words, if I'm understanding this correctly, it is what I would shave with if it were my last shave on earth before they put a needle in me or something. Uh, let's hope it doesn't come to that, but uh, I'll give you some idea here. Uh, I've already prepped my face with Village Barber shaving oil. I use this a lot and it just seems handy. It's a little bit pricey. It's like $20 a bottle, but uh, well, it seems good for my face. It hasn't hurt me yet, although I'm about to go to the electric chair or the gas chamber. Or depends on what year this is that we're talking about, uh, but I guess you can't go backwards. So anyway, um, there's that and my razor. I thought I would choose this. It's a... Uh, two-piece. It's the original um, Gillette single ring razor. This one's open comb and uh, this thing is a little over a hundred years old, about 102 years old now. In there on its first use will be one of these Treat uh, Black Beauty carbon steel blades and let's see my I thought I would go for a kind of a barber shop uh, scent uh, on my last day on earth, I guess, and uh, kind of classic, the barber shop scent from uh, Shannon Soaks. I thought I might use that because uh, I've kind of neglected it lately. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've already lathered on my Yaqui Sagrada Familia uh, synthetic brush. It's just a handy brush. And let's see, I think I'll uh, run a little bit of hot water here and uh, just wet the tips of the brush, which has some soap on it. Um, we'll see how this goes. I didn't use my little shaving bowl this time. I thought I would just face lather. Here we go. Hope you're all doing well out there. Let's see how this goes. I think my last meal is going to be spaghetti, or my meal of the day, as it were. I uh, finally got some more grated Parmesan cheese, and I, uh, I had that on a little bit of what was some leftover spaghetti from the other day, and I think I might fix spaghetti again. It's very late here. I will be having a very late dinner, I suppose. I guess that's okay. I'll uh, drain this water, and then I'll wet the razor and get started here. Okay, let's see. Pass number one with the grain. Let's see how it goes. I've got to use a light touch on this, because this can bite me. This razor can be... For me, it's very aggressive. Well, I'm about three days worth of growth here. I've been lazy. I haven't been shaving every day. Of course, with these good shaves I get with this uh, classic, this type of classic equipment, I really only have to shave usually uh, every two days, although that's not written in stone because after some good shaves, there have been certain days, and I don't know, maybe you'd have to ask my doctor about this, but there have been certain days that my stubble did start growing in for the next day, uh, so I had to shave, uh, you know, uh, two days in a row. And I don't know why that happens because sometimes... Sometimes that will happen after a very good, very close, and comfortable classic shave. Let's see. 
using a lighter touch here. That's good. Sometimes I say I'm going to use a lighter touch and I end up not doing that. But this is feeling good so far and I'm going to rinse this now. Continuing on here. Death Row Shave. What I might use if it were my last day on earth. My last shave. I'm reminded of that Twilight Zone episode, the original, the original series, uh, one of those in black and white, where Dennis Weaver, also known as Chester on, gun, on Gunsmoke and McLeod when he had his own TV show, uh, his character kept dreaming that he was in prison, about to be uh, electrocuted, executed in the electric chair. It was a recurring dream, and some of the characters would switch places and be other characters, but he, he still had the same dream every night, that he was about to be electrocuted, excuse me. That episode was actually redone during a writer's strike when they didn't have any newer scripts on the 1980s version of the Twilight Zone. Somebody else played the, the man condemned to die. Okay, easy now. I'm, I'm telling that to myself. I gotta remember to take it easy. For me, even with three days worth of growth, this razor is a little aggressive. That's all I'm saying about that. I'm trying to think. On the heels of Halloween and on my last day on earth here, so to speak, I am, uh, I'm thinking about the original Twilight Zone and the subsequent versions from the 80s and the year 2000 and the most recent one, the Jordan Peele version. I'm thinking about those. I'm also thinking, I can't remember the man's name, but he was, he was a writer for comic books and uh, he writes novels now and he had written for the 1980s Twilight Zone some very good uh, stories, one in particular that I remember. But anyway, <clears throat> um, well, uh, I ended up, he ended up unfriending me on Facebook because I kept babbling about shaving. I kid you not. I'll be right back and then I'll go across the grain. And that writer I was telling you about, I was babbling about shaving to him for two reasons. One, because I liked the hobby so much, and also because he was writing a historic novel about something or the other, and I kept uh, talking about, you know, these sh old shaving brushes and things, which I could picture him uh, mentioning possibly in his novel he was writing, but... Uh, he said I was distracting him too much and that I had promised to quit doing that and quit talking about shaving. So in as friendly a way as possible, he unfriended me on Facebook. And then I have spoken via a uh, call-in radio program, Coast to Coast AM. I've spoken to uh, one of Rod Serling's daughters. Ann Serling, who wrote a book about her dad, and I've read that book a couple of times, and uh, she she's a very nice person. I also communicated with her online, but uh, she kind of disappeared also when I kept babbling about shaving. Excuse me.
The death row of shave continues. Somebody is out in the hallway laughing. One of my neighbors, I think I know who it is. Maybe they're laughing because they heard me in, the, in here announcing that the death row of shave continues. I don't know. Maybe not. Probably not. I want to be thorough, but I've got to remember to use the, uh, the light touch on uh, with this razor. Maybe I should have used a different blade, but this one will do. It'll get the job done. Okay, we'll go to the neck here. And an area where I need to especially remember to use a light touch. I can definitely feel when I press down a little too hard. It's a bad habit I have, and it might be uh, a, a vestigial thing, something left over from the days when I used cartridges or disposables. Actually, I mostly used disposable razors then. I think I had one or two cartridge razors, which I would use maybe only on special occasions because the cartridges were and are so darn expensive. I think I gave myself a weeper already, possibly, unless that's something left over from a previous shave. About a week ago, well, not a week ago, but several days ago, I forget exactly when. It was after I did my last video, so less than a week ago, I think it might have been. Possibly on that Monday, I used one of my my uh, sp straight razors, and I got a couple of weepers and one bleeder, but other than that, it might have been the best shave I ever had, because I don't use it that often. Well, I have two straight razors. Both are shave ready. They're both still sharp, and I've used them several times, but I don't use them often. And I'm far from being an expert at that kind of shaving, but it seems like I get better and better at it. My last shave with such a razor was, um, I don't know if it was the most comfortable shave I've had, but it was the best shave except for those couple of weepers and one small bleeder that some cold water and alum made mostly go away. I don't have a scar or anything, and I'll be right back, and then we'll go against the grain. Trying to be thorough, but trying to also use a light touch. Which, for me, that can be difficult sometimes. Once again, the death row shave, what I might shave with if it were, if it were my last day or night on Earth. I was tagged by uh, Robert's, Robert's Classic Shaving. Check him out on YouTube here, won't you please? And let me see, I'll turn the razor over and do the other side of my neck here.
the old rake razor, a Gillette single ring um, open comb razor from 1920. So 102 years old this year. Pretty crazy. I know there's people out there that have older razors. I might even have one or two older single edge razors possibly. Excuse me. Yeah, next time I might use a different different blade in this razor. Or if not next time, I will the next time I change blades. And on these Black Beauty blades, I tend to only use them no, definitely no more than three times if I can help it, if I remember. And usually no more than twice. They've disappointed me lately. At one time, they seemed like lifesavers. Not the candy, not the not and not the thing that they throw you if you fall overboard in a boat or out of a boat I mean but uh, it was just these blades I had very good luck with them for a while but uh, then I guess you could say I found better blades and these were not the first blades I used but they were among the first Maybe the first, among the first 25 or so, excuse me. Shave is feeling pretty good. A little bit rough, but not too much. Or not, not too bad. Sorry, I had my hand in front of where I was shaving there, but uh, I'll be right back for pickups. Looking forward to finishing my shave and going, uh, going on what they call that, the Green Mile or whatever, the 13 steps to the gallows or the, the Green Mile, the last walk to the execution chamber or whatever. And I want to look nicely shaven for my public. I guess if they asked me to put a mask, if I want a mask over my face, I guess I'll say no. I want to look pretty when I go. Let's see. I think I want a sharper and smoother blade in the next lifetime.
that this is okay. This is, let's see, right now, before gilding the lily too much, I would say that this is, this is a standard uh, DFS, a darn fine shave. Well, here to begin escorting me down the hall to the green, green grass of home, it's our good friend, Padre Tao. <sighs> Cause there's a god and there's a sad old Padre Arm in arm, we'll walk at daybreak. Once again, I'll see the green, green grass of home. Something like that. This song is about a man condemned to die. But he's evidently asked God for forgiveness and is uh, sure he'll uh, see his lost loved ones uh, on the other side, if you know what I mean. So thank you, Mr. I mean, Padre Tal, as you are today. Okay, let me do a quick recap and then I'll put the finishing touches on the shave here. Well, before I started, I prep my face with Village Barber shaving oil. And my razor has been this two-piece Gillette single ring razor, open comb from 102 years ago. It twists open down here and then you take the cap off. And let's see, my soap has been this Shannon Soaps uh, barber shop shaving soap. And I used to, I mean, no, I didn't used to have, I've twice ordered the matching aftershave to this, and I believe twice I was sent something else. Fortunately, what I was sent was something I, I also lacked, so I kept it, but that's the soap. Um, let's see, my brush has been this Yaki 24-millimeter professional, it says, um, it's called the Sagrada Familia brush with the synthetic 24 millimeter knot. Sagrada Familia means a holy family. And uh, there's a Sagrada Familia Basilica in Spain, in Barcelona, I think. Let's see. Uh, oh, and my blade that went in my razor on its first use was one of these treat carbon steel black beauty blades as they are known colloquially. Now I'm going to reach for something else I guess I'd want to use on my last day on earth or last night in the uh, Thayer's Lavender Witch Hazel. Non-alcoholic. It's a toner, not an astringent. Put some of that in my hand, get that going. I'm going to hurry here, I'm running behind. smells pretty nice and has a light lavender scent. It's a Thayer's Lavender Witch Hazel Facial Toner. And since I don't have the matching aftershave to that soap, but I'd still like to have a familiar barbershop scent as I go out of this world, here's the uh, Stefan Lilac Aftershave Cologne for face and body, it says. Used in a lot of traditional barber shops still, I'm sure. I seem to remember this scent from my childhood. Some of the barber shops put this on the gentleman. Let's see, got behind the ears, temples, back of the neck. Oh, and a little bit on the wrists wouldn't hurt. And a little bit of sting, nothing, nothing too terrible. Let's see. It's really nice. 
That's the Stefan Wylak aftershave cologne. And that's available at many uh, beauty and barbershop supply houses online and, and out in the wild. Finally, I'm going to finish with this Nivea Men Original Replenishing Post-Shave Balm, the original version. And a new, uh, freshly opened bottle, or new-ish anyway. Yeah, there we go. That's, uh, that's enough right there. That'll do your whole face and neck and everything. Very good. Very good stuff. Oh, that finishes off the shave so nicely. Once I'm done uh, doodling around here, I'll uh, show you that bottle again. In case you should be new to this, this type of shaving or new to this product, Nivea Men Original Post Shave Balm. I had to get that online. I haven't seen it, haven't seen it in stores here in the U.S. Not even sure if it's still being made, but it's still there's still fresh bottles of it out there. I'm going to go. Thank you for everything. Peace out. Oh, incidentally, here is a necessary postscript to this video. Me and Sarge here, we would like to tag you, Paul H., to do the death row shave. Will you please do that? Since I got tagged, I thought I would tag you. I don't know if I'm supposed to tag anybody else, but I think I'll tag you. And me and Sarge uh, wish you well.